In just two days, there have been an insane amount of behind the scene details that we don't usually get a chance to see when it comes to game development. But this Xbox versus FTC case is just a juicy one. Details like Microsoft admits to losing the console war. Detailed information about when to expect the next generation of consoles to release. Looks like one of the PlayStation boss with Jim Ryan effectively lying to everyone about the situation about this merger. And Phil Spencer even admitting that we're at least five years away from Elder Scrolls 6 coming out and a whole lot more information. So make sure you guys stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Day one saw a lot of really interesting stuff where Microsoft actually claimed that Bobby Kotick, the head of Activision, demanded a bigger revenue cut of the share when it comes to Call of Duty on Xbox. And basically now I like how Phil Spencer and Xbox are basically giving them a Uno reversal card going like, oh yeah, we'll just buy your company then. Vice President of Xbox, Sarah Bond, said that Bobby Kotick effectively said this saying if we did not move beyond standard revenue share that he bobby kodak intended to not place call of duty on xbox which is crazy to think about since this entire thing with the ftc is that like oh no xbox is going to make a lot of really big games and companies really exclusive to just xbox while also those companies and PlayStation and other things were trying to make them more exclusive if Xbox didn't meet the demands or just try to make things more exclusive for PlayStation and other platforms. We found that Machine Games Indiana Jones game that's gonna be coming out here pretty soon was originally supposed to be planned for PlayStation, but then once Xbox acquired ZeniMax, which is the company that Machine Games is owned by, they sound like now Indiana Jones is gonna be a day one exclusive to Xbox. With the exclusivity of Starfield, it's actually proven to be an effective way to produce the game faster for Starfield as Pete Hines, one of the heads over there at Bethesda, said that Starfield would not be out in nine weeks if it was released on the PlayStation 5. Effectively stating that since it was limited to just that platform and also PC as well, that they didn't have to test for PlayStation and things like that. So the QA things was actually streamlined quite a bit. But Hines also implied that he was blindsided by Xbox's commitment to bring Activision games like Call of Duty to PlayStation and other platforms while Bethesda was only making Starfield for Xbox and PC. Because also brought up within this FTC case was the fact that PlayStation was really interested in making Starfield exclusive to their platform. Back in 2020, it sounds like Sony was actually in negotiations with making Starfield a timed exclusive game. I just love finding out about these little intricate details of what's going on behind the scenes. You never hear about this kind of stuff out in the public. But since it's in the court case, the information's out there so we have better knowledge of why these large companies are making these crazy decisions like Xbox buying ZeniMax Bethesda and now trying to acquire Activision Blizzard. While we're on the topic of Bethesda games, remember that little game that was announced back in E3 2018, Elder Scrolls 6? Yeah, we're really far away from the launch of that game coming out. That's according to the head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, saying that they're still five plus years away, which is crazy. And also that PlayStation version is undecided and that it's not out of the realm of possibility to consider that the Elder Scrolls 6 game may skip this current console generation completely, which is insane to think that far in advance. So with that in mind, you kind of put two and two together with based on the information. So saying based off of Spencer's comments, fans shouldn't expect Elder Scrolls 6 to launch until 2028 at the early which is worth noting that 2020 is the year Xbox expects the generation of consoles to launch. So if you're expecting to play Elder Scrolls 6 on your current console, probably not going to happen. Another thing this court case brought up is that Microsoft and Xbox have effectively been losing this console war since they first stepped into the game back in 2001 with the original Xbox, saying the original Xbox console was outsold by both Sony and Nintendo by a significant margin and per Xbox, it hasn't stopped losing the console war ever since. Not that Xbox's place within the market is nothing to be proud of because they definitely still have a very strong foothold within gaming. But when it comes to businesses, it's always down to money and Microsoft has always been a solid third place when it comes to sales. As Xbox has really just been like a US based company where you have like PlayStation very strong in like Europe and also in Japan and also with Nintendo being just strong, well, literally around the world. Like 
like Nintendo destroys Sony and Xbox when it comes to sales. With some facts to back it up, saying that in 2021, Xbox had a share of 16%, while Nintendo and PlayStation had their respective shares. It wasn't shared within this as it was redacted information. And same for console revenues and share of consoles currently in use by gamers. So that means like an installed base of players, Xbox trails with 21%. Again, a significant size of the market, but not the lion's share that I'm sure Microsoft and Xbox were hoping for. And I'm sure coming off of the Xbox One, which really didn't do well with comes to the gaming community as a whole because of all the weird features and things that they were pushing onto the players that they didn't really want for their console back then. If you think Xbox makes a lot of money off just console sales, well, you're kind of might be thinking differently because that's actually not true. Most of the times they're actually subsidizing the cost of the customer to make sure they just get the hardware themselves, which is the hardest leap to make players make. Stated here, saying Microsoft goes on to argue the result is betting on a different strategy by generating profit through game sales rather than console sales and selling the consoles at a loss, effectively subsidizing gamers' purchase of the hardware in hopes of making up revenue through sales of games and accessories. And Xbox's recent list of exclusives and games are on the platform, or at least game studios created by Xbox, haven't really been that strong recently. And hence why we're at the part where Xbox Xbox is just trying to buy up the market share because they have the cash. They just need to find a way to get the games that people want to play on those platforms. And while we're on the topic of Xbox and their platforms being used, Xbox actually revealed one of their new services is probably their least used one when it comes to Game Pass. Saying the least popular feature is the Xbox Cloud Gaming Service. Sarah Bond states that what we've found is that it's really being used by our players as a feature for the console. Because what people can do is when you go to start playing a game, instead of waiting for it to download, you can start playing it right away while it's downloading in the background. And that's actually the majority of the usage of xCloud Gaming today. It's a feature for the console, which is kind of funny because the block in the UK is all over xCloud and like cloud gaming services and things like that. But people just aren't really using xCloud as Xbox and a lot of, I'm sure a lot of other people would expect it to be used. But since it's such a new feature and it hasn't really come into its own yet, that I think it's the reason why it's not really being utilized a whole lot. But it's just funny to know that like, yeah, Xbox's least used service is the whole reason why this whole Xbox acquisition is being blocked in the UK over cloud gaming that people aren't really using. Could it be used in the future? Absolutely. I think it's probably the future of gaming as a whole. But as it stands right now with the technology that we have, it's just not good enough to compete with like a PC or a console when it comes to the gaming experiences. And one of the biggest and loudest voices against this entire merger is the CEO over at PlayStation, Jim Ryan. He was stated saying, giving Microsoft control of Activision games like Call of Duty, this deal would have major negative implications for gamers and the future of the game industry. We want to guarantee PlayStation gamers can continue to have the highest quality gaming experience and we appreciate the CMA's focus on protecting gamers. Well, when it comes to being on the stand and having to speak truth, well, it sounds like he's singing a different tune. In an email that Jim Ryan wrote to the company saying, I'm pretty sure we will continue to see Call of Duty on PlayStation for many years to come. Continuing on saying, we have some good stuff cooking keep your eyes peeled i'm not complacent and i'd rather this hadn't happened but we'll be okay more than okay so jim ryan who's been screaming the sky is falling effectively multiple times over saying how bad this merger is going to be but behind the scenes he's just kind of like you yeah, know what yeah it sucks i don't want to see this happen but we'll be fine jim ryan just putting on his political hat right there where he's saying one thing in public they rile people up and then also saying something else completely different behind the scenes and we have more dates coming when it comes to this ftc xbox trial on tuesday June 27th, we'll have another court date as well as Wednesday, June 28th. And then on Thursday, if necessary, we'll have another one. So we'll have more information to come about this whole discussion. There are so many more details I wasn't able to cover in this video. I just want to pick out the top ones for you guys. But if you want to stay updated with everything going on with this court case and more information about Xbox, PlayStation, and this largest merger in gaming history, we'll let you guys know here on the channel.